Welcome to this video. We're going to learn about ballistic pendulums. This is a ballistic pendulum. It's a giant block, usually made of wood, attached by two strings to the ceiling. Now the floor is somewhere below, so this is not resting on the floor. These are used to determine how fast bullets or other objects are going. The basic idea is this. You take a bullet and you fire it toward the ballistic pendulum. It enters the pendulum and becomes lodged inside. But now, the momentum carries the entire thing up, so it swings up to some final height. H represents how high up it goes from where it started. Now there are three distinct stages in this process that we have to consider. The first is when the bullet it has not yet entered the pendulum. The second is where the bullet has lodged, and as a result, the entire thing is now swinging to the right. And the final stage is when it has reached this maximum height and it stops before swinging back down. Let's define some variables in the problem. The initial velocity of the bullet, we'll call that u. The block initially is at rest. The final velocity of the two together, we're going to call that v. The mass of the bullet is very small, so we'll call it little m, and the mass of the block is really big by comparison, so we'll call it big M. To solve this problem, we have to use conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. Consider first what happens from this moment to this moment. Momentum is conserved because we have essentially a head-on collision. But we know more. What kind of collision is this? And remember, after they move together. The answer is this is a perfectly inelastic collision because the two objects move together at the end. So let's write down the equation for conservation of momentum. On the left side of the equation, I'll total up all of the momentum at the beginning, and on the right side, I'll total up all of the momentum at the end. So let's get started with the left side. Initially, the bullet has momentum equal to its mass times its initial velocity. And initially, the big block has a momentum equal to its mass times its initial velocity, which is zero. That's the initial momentum. Over here, what's the final momentum? Well, the objects move together, so we can treat them as one single object, moving at a final velocity, v. Now let's consider conservation of energy from this moment on the left to this moment on the right. We start out with what type of energy? Well, the blocks are moving, so it's kinetic. We end up with what type of energy? The blocks aren't moving, so they don't have kinetic anymore. Instead, they have height, that's gravitational potential energy. So on the left side, we have the formula for kinetic energy, 1 half mass times speed squared, and their speed is v, the final velocity after the collision. And on the right side, we have the equation for gravitational potential energy, mass times g times the height. Now in both cases, the object that's moving with the speed v, or velocity v, is the two together, so the mass is the collective mass. That's the same here. We use the same collective mass on the right side. And this makes life easy because the two mass terms, m plus m, they cancel out because they're in both terms, and we're left with just this. The left side formula gives us conservation of momentum from the first moment before the collision to the moment right after the collision. This right side equation over here gives us conservation of energy going from right after the collision to the point where they've swung up to the final height. Both are needed to solve these problems.